Hello and welcome to day 251 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts filled with gratitude for the gift of your word. As we embark on this time of reading and reflection, we invite your Holy Spirit to open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to receive the truth you want to reveal to us today, the 251st day of our Bible journey. We thank you that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, guiding us in every step we take. The Lord May your words speak deeply into our spirits, transforming us and renewing our minds. We ask for wisdom, understanding, and discernment as we read through the scriptures that we may grow in faith, knowledge, and love for you. Help us not only to be hearers of your word, but do us also, living out the truth we receive today. Father, we pray for strength to apply what we learn to our lives and we ask that your word will draw us closer to you molding our character to reflect the image of christ let every verse encourage correct and inspire us to live according to your will we surrender this time to you lord and we trust that you will speak to us through your living word thank you for this moment to seek you and be in your presence in jesus name we pray amen day 251 september 8th 2024 365 days bible reading old testament isaiah 17 18 19 new testament second corinthians 10 psalms and proverbs psalm 106 verse 16 to 31 old testament niv version Isaiah 17, 1 to 14, a prophecy against Damascus. A prophecy against Damascus. See, Damascus will no longer be a city, but will become a heap of ruins. The cities of Aroa will be deserted and left to flocks which will lie down with no one to make them afraid. The fortified city will disappear from Ephraim and royal power from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the glory of the Israelites, declares the Lord Almighty. In that day, the glory of Jacob will fade, the fat of his body will waste away. It will be as when reapers harvest the standing grain, gathering the grain in their arms, as when someone gleans heads of grain in the valley of Rephaim. Yet, some gleans will remain as when an olive tree is beaten, leaving two or three olives on the topmost branches, four or five in the fruitful bowls, declares the Lord, the God of Israel. In that day, people will look to their maker and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars, the work of their hands, and they will have no regards for the Asherah poles and the incense altars their fingers have made. In that day, their strong cities which they left because of the Israelites will be like places abandoned to thickets and undergrowth, and all will be desolation. You have forgotten God your Savior. You have not remembered the rock your fortress. Therefore, though you set out the finest plants and plant imported vines, though on the day you set them out, you make them grow, and on the morning when you plant them, you bring them to bud. Yet the harvest will be as nothing in the day of diseases and incurable pain. Woe to the many nations that rage, they rage like the raging sea. Woe to the peoples who roar, they roar like the roaring of great waters although the peoples roar like the roar of surging waters when he rebukes them they flee far away driven before the wind like chaff on the hills like tumbleweed before a gale in the evening sudden terror before the morning they are gone this is a portion of those who loot us the lot of those who plunder us 
Isaiah 18, 1 to 7, a prophecy against Cush. Woe to the land of wearing wings along the rivers of Cush, which sends envoys by sea in papyrus boats over the water. Go, swift messengers, to a people tall and smooth skin, to a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers. All you people of the world, you will live on the earth. When a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. And when a trumpet sounds, you will hear it. This is what the Lord says to me. I will remain quiet and will look on from, from my dwelling place like shimmering heat in the sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is gone and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots with pruning knives and cut down and take away the spreading branches. They will all be left to the mountain birds of prey and to the wild animals. The birds will feed on them all summer, the wild animals all winter. At that time, gifts will be brought to the Lord Almighty from a people tall and smooth skinned, from a people feared far and wide, an aggressive nation of strange speech whose land is divided by rivers. The gifts will be brought to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord Almighty. Isaiah 19, 1-25 A prophecy against Egypt. A prophecy against Egypt. See, the Lord rides on a swift cloud and is coming to Egypt. The idols of Egypt tremble before him and the hearts of the Egyptians melt with fear. I will stir up Egyptian against Egyptian. Brother will fight against brother neighbor against neighbor city against city kingdom against kingdom the egyptians will lose heart and will bring their plans to nothing they will consult the idols and the spirits of the dead the mediums and the spiritists i will hand the egyptians over to the power of a cruel master and a fierce king will rule over them declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. The waters of the river will dry up and the riverbed will be parched and dry. The canals will stink. The streams of Egypt will dwindle and dry up. The reeds and rushes will wither also the plants along the Nile at the mouth of the river. Every sown field along the Nile will become parched with will blow away and be no more the fishermen will groan and lament all will cast hooks into the nile those who throw nets on the water will pine away those who work with combed flax will despair the weavers of fine linen will lose hope the workers in cloth will be dejected and all the wage earners will be sick at heart the officials at zoan are nothing but fools the wise counselors of pharaoh give senseless advice how can you say to pharaoh i am one of the wise men a disciple of the ancient kings where are your wise men now let them show you and make known what the lord almighty has planned against egypt the officials of zoan have become fools the leaders of memphis are deceived the cornerstones of her peoples have led egypt astray the Lord has poured into them a spirit of dizziness. They make Egypt stagger in all that she does, as a drunkard staggers around in his vomit. There is nothing Egypt can do, head or tail, palm beach, palm branch or reed. In that day, the Egyptians will become weaklings. They will shudder with fear at the uplifted hand that the Lord Almighty raises against them, and the land of Judah will bring terror to the Egyptians. Everyone to whom Judah is mentioned will be terrified because of what the Lord Almighty is planning against them. In that day, five cities in Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear allegiance to the Lord Almighty. One of them will be called the City of the Sun. In that day, there will be an altar to the Lord in the heart of Egypt, and a monument to the Lord at its border. It will be a sign and a witness to the Lord Almighty in the land of Egypt. 
when they cry out to the Lord because of their oppressors, they will send them a savior and defender and he will rescue them. So the Lord will make himself known to the Egyptians and in that day they will acknowledge the Lord. They will worship with sacrifices and grain offerings. They will make vows to the Lord and keep them. The Lord will strike Egypt with a plague. He will strike them and heal them. They will turn to the Lord and he will respond to their pleas and heal them. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. The Assyrians will go to Egypt and the Egyptians to Assyria. The Egyptians and Assyrians will worship together. In that day, Israel will be the third along with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing on the earth. The Lord Almighty will bless them, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, my handiwork, and Israel, my inheritance. New Testament, NIV version, 2 Corinthians 10, 1-18. Paul's defense of his ministry. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you, I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold toward you when away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war against the world, war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. You are judging by appearances. If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as much as they do. So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave us for building up, building you up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. I do not want to seem to be trying to frighten you with my letters. For some say his letters are weighty and forceful, but in person he is unimpressive and his, his speaking amounts to nothing. Such people should realize that what we are in our letters when we are absent, we will be in our actions when we are present. We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who recommend themselves when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves they are not wise we however will not boast beyond proper limits but will confine our boasting to the sphere of service god him, himself has assigned to us a sphere that also includes you we are not going too far in our boasting as would be the case if we had not come to you for we did get as far as you with the gospel of christ neither do we go beyond our limits by boasting of work done by others our hope is that as your faith continues to grow our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you for we do not want to boast about work already done in someone else's territory but let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 106, verse 16 to 31. In the camp, they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron, who was consecrated to the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. In, it buried the company of Abiram. Fire blazed among their followers, a flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glorious God for an image of a bull which eats grass. They forget they forgot the God who saved them, who had done great things in Egypt, miracles in the land of Ham and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them. Had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the Breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. 
Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their tents and did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the wilderness, make their descendants fall among the nations and scatter them throughout the lands. They yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor and eat sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. They aroused the Lord's anger by their wicked deeds and the plague broke out among them. But Phinehas stood up and intervened and the plague was checked. This was credited to him as righteousness for endless generations to come. Amen. Lessons learned from Isaiah 17. God's judgment on nations. This chapter focuses on the judgment of Damascus and Israel due to their sins. It teaches us that no nation or people are exempt from God's righteous judgment when they are turned, when they turn away from Him. The frailty of human strength. The cities and fortresses that people trusted in were reduced to ruin. This reminds us that relying on human power, wealth, or achievements is futile. Only trust in God provides true security. God's mercy and restoration. Despite judgment, there is a promise that some will turn back to God. This teaches us that even in times of correction, God desires repentance and offers restoration to those who seek Him. Lessons learned from Isaiah 18. God's sovereignty over all nations. This chapter speaks of God's message to a distant land, Cush and shows his control over all nations, even those far from Israel. It reminds us that God's authority is universal and his plans reach all corners of the earth. The importance of waiting on God. The people are called to watch and wait for God's plan to unfold. This teaches us patience in trusting God's timing, knowing that he is working out his purposes, even when we cannot see them immediately. Lessons learned from Isaiah 19. God's part to bring nations to humility. Egypt is described as being brought low, showing that even the mightiest nations will face God's judgment if they oppose him. It teaches us that God's power surpasses all and he can humble any nation or leader. The promise of healing and restoration. Despite the judgment, Isaiah prophesies that Egypt will turn to God and receive healing and restoration. This teaches us that God's ultimate desire is reconciliation and healing for all people, even those once far from him. Unity among nations through God. There is a vision of peace and worship among Israel, Egypt, and Assyria, highlighting that God desires unity and peace among all nations through his love and grace. Lessons learned from 2 Corinthians 10. Spiritual warfare requires spiritual weapons. Paul teaches that the battles we face as believers are spiritual and we must use spiritual weapons such as prayer, faith, and God's word to combat them. This reminds us that we cannot rely on human strength or tactics in spiritual warfare. Taking every thought captive. Paul instructs believers to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. This teaches us the importance of controlling our thoughts, submitting them to God, and rejecting anything that opposes his truth. Boasting in the Lord, not in ourselves. Paul emphasizes that any boasting should be in what the Lord has done, not in human achievements or strength. This reminds us, to give glory to God in all things, recognizing that any success or victory is from Him alone. Lessons learned from Psalm 106, verse 16 to 31. The consequences of rebellion against God's leaders. The passage recounts how rebellion against Moses and Aaron brought about severe consequences. This teaches us to respect the leaders God appoints and to avoid the sin of rebellion against God's authority. The power of intercession. Phinehas stood up and interceded on behalf of the people, turning away God's wrath. This reminds us of the importance of standing in the gap for others through prayer and intercession knowing that God honors those who act in righteousness. God's mercy in judgment. 
Even when the Israelites sinned and faced judgment, God showed mercy through intercession. This teaches us that God's judgment is just, but His mercy is always available to those who seek it. Faith declarations from Isaiah 17, 18, and 19. I declare that my trust is in God alone, not in human strength or material wealth. I confess that I will turn to God in times of trouble, knowing that He alone is my refuge and strength. I reject any form of idolatry or misplaced trust, and I choose to rely fully on the Lord's provision and protection. I declare that I will wait patiently for God's timing in all things, trusting that He is in control and working out His perfect plan. I confess that God is sovereign over all nations and I place my confidence in His power and His authority, knowing that He will bring about justice and peace according to His will. I declare that God is my healer and my restorer, both in my life and in the nations. I confess that I will turn to him for healing, trusting that he is able to restore what is broken. I declare unity and peace through God's love and grace, believing that he desires reconciliation among people and nations. Faith Declarations from 2 Corinthians 10 I declare that I am equipped with spiritual weapons to overcome any strongholds or oppositions. I confess that I will take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. I will not rely on my human strength, but will stand firm in the power of God to wage spiritual warfare. I boast only in the Lord, for any success and victory come from Him alone. Faith Declarations from Psalm 106, verse 16 to 31. I declare that I will respect and honor the leaders God has appointed over me, submitting to their authority in alignment with God's will. I confess that I will stand in the gap and intercede for others, knowing that my prayers can make a difference. In turning away wrath and bringing healing, I trust in God's mercy, believing that He is always ready to forgive when we turn to Him, in repentance and faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you will like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are so excited to welcome you into God's family. Please kindly go ahead right now. Send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new walk of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. God bless you. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Also, go ahead and share this broadcast with your friends and family and loved ones. Encourage them to join us every day as we read our Bibles. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.